Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the number one professional wrestling radio show in Las Vegas. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Going bell to bell with the best in professional wrestling news, entertainment, and lots of Sin City surprises from inside the squared circle. Now, let's get to all the exciting pro wrestling action and bring on the host. Here is Mark Hoke. And we are back on the Mark Hoke Show here on KDON 101.5 FM. It is the talk of Las Vegas. And we're just simply the best. That's all there is to it. Universal powerhouse. And I've got three of my favorite guys in here in the studio with me for hour number two. Jason Halpern in the house. Jason, what's going on? Uh, you know, same old, same old. Just uh, living the dream out here in Vegas. Well, there you go. Stu Myrie from Sports Guys talking wrestling with his memorabilia and all that crazy stuff in the bedroom. Bedroom? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, by the way, it's fourth quarter, Jets and Vikings, and Aaron Rodgers hasn't been injured yet. So there we go. Hey, congratulations. Congratulations. Record. Phil Stamper at Trusted <laughs> Phil. He is the president of wrestling. What a sly little minx he is over there. What's going on, Phil? What did I do? <laughs> you do everything. We all know you cause trouble I mean, out there. That's why I'm the president of wrestling, because I do it all. Hey, Phil, by the way, Wrestling Revolver is coming to Texas next week. We are coming to Texas next Saturday. Grand Prairie, Grand Texas Prairie. at the yeah. Epic. Up in the DFW Metroplex. Get to see a few of my favorites. Oh, good. I'm glad. Uh, I mean. Watch out for Brick Savage. I, you know what? That was the first person I was going to say. It, it, uh, so Brick lives here in Austin. Mm -hmm. okay, he and I shop at the same grocery store. And even I take a you know scenic route around him but you know he's they call him the world breaker for a reason nice Rick savage versus jake something versus moose that's whoa gonna big. that's yeah. gonna be big literally that, big yeah <laughs> that's gonna be an awesome match that's so gonna be yeah so make sure you check that out at the wrestling revolver all right and uh by the way before we get into more wrestling i'd just like to mention that the university of north dakota really really sucks they're terrible they do not know how to play football they they got lucky last year and finally beat us for the first time in the D1 era. But yesterday, 41-17, to smoking by the bison. As you can see, that NDSU medallion oh, yeah. hanging back by Jason Halpern's head. No matter what era, no matter what year, no matter what day, UND still sucks. UND. Ah! All right. Losers! Okay, I feel better now. That's Eddie. not North Dakota State, right? North Dakota State. No, not North North Dakota no. State beat them because no. we're better than them. Uh, we always oh, will be okay. better than them. I was trying to the, figure out who we are. The suit, the, the, well, the suit, well, the Hawks, whatever. We, I didn't know, but I know what school. Yeah. At first, I thought he was throwing shade at Jason, and I was like, I what? Don't, no, don't no, 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 no. Oh, Jesus. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't throw I wouldn't anything, anything at Jason. You know, Jesus. there's an unwritten rule in sports media. You never say, you never show, you know, we. I don't play for the Cowboys. I went to North Dakota State and was in the athletic training department for a while. I can say I, we. All right. I can say we. I have all the respect in the world for athletic trainers. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right. Uh, a couple of loose ends I wanted to wrap up uh, with uh, what happened yesterday, too. Uh, first, Kevin Owens attacked Cody Rhodes out in the parking lot after that was over. Mm -hmm. In case you missed that. So, KO. I got my Kevin Steen back. I'm so happy, Phil. I'm happy. I'm very happy for you. <laughs> but is it is it just going to be, I don't, I, uh, let it be brutal. Let it be vicious. We don't know what happened. What is, how are they going to turn this around? Um, um, I want to see the, the WWE video of it. I've only seen like the fan cam sort of capturing it, which is cool in the way that that was the reveal for it. Um, and wait, when they were, while they're doing the press release, the press conference, um, uh, Triple H comes in and sits down and Cody is not available right now. And he goes into the press conference and then towards in the press conference, you see in the chat, Kevin just attacked him. Kevin just attacked Cody. It's that's, <laughs> that's awesome. So, so I've got my bad Kevin back. Stu, you look excited. Well, no, I, it's not so much excitement as look, you know, and I think back to Paul White, the big show, you know, he always joked about, he had, you know, he had more, more turns than NASCAR, I would say Formula One, but 
you know, and so I'm wondering if that's happening with Kevin because, and I get, you know, Kevin's great as a heel. I get it, but it's kind of like, all right, well, let's see what, when they turn Miz, you know, Miz turned on our truth on raw last week. It's kind of like, all right, here we go again. Another Miz heel run. All right. We'll wait, wait it out and see what happens to make him turn face again. Cause you know, it will. <laughs> and that's, it's starting to feel that way with Kevin. It's like, all right, we'll wait this out and see. And oh, I mean, what happens to Randy Orton? Is he going to turn on Cody too? I mean, that's been the rumor. I I get the sense Randy is enjoying doing what he's doing right now. So maybe he doesn't, but that's just me. That might be a fun Saturday night's main event with uh main event with Randy and Kevin taking on Roman and Cody. That 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 would be good for that show, I think. That's possible. I mean, you got you got some time to build it cuz that's mid-December, so you got time to build it. But again, that would mean Randy has to turn heel too. Well, yeah. They're friends. They're all friends. It's a it's a it's a lovers triangle for professional wrestling. And friends like to beat up each other. Yeah, <laughs> being in the ring with somebody who you know and love. Oh man, yeah, because <laughs> you know they're going to hit you back just as hard. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's great. So so Kevin Owens goes bad. Um, you were talking about the press conference as well, Phil, and Triple H got confronted about black representation on the cards. Of course, it's been a little mm-hmm. bit since we've had a uh, black singles res- male wrestler getting a win on a uh, WWE PLE and uh, Triple H said, I don't see color. I just see talent. And it's been a mixed bag to those comments to say the least. Jason, what do you think about Triple H's response to that question? I think it's a very bland response. Uh, honestly, you know, you don't have a lot of representation on the card right now on the, on the, you know, on the main card. Um, you know, that being said, you have to work with what you got. You know, you're going to see the push. You know, you're going to see the him push here. They're already pushing him uh, a little bit, just just not enough. But I think that's obviously the, the next big push right there. Uh, the loss of Lashley was huge. Um, but he wasn't even being used right towards the end, so it didn't really matter. Mm-hmm. He, he was, you know, mid-card at that point. You know, they just didn't want to use him for some reason or another. Uh, and that's just kind of my take on it. Stu, what did you think of that? of that comment. I, Jason's right. There, there isn't a lot of representation on the roster, quite honestly. Now again, yeah, you work with what you got, but you've got some guys in NXT. I mean, I'm glad trick Williams has the NXT title, but it might be time to bring him up. It might be, you know, there's, there are the you know there are some talents down in NXT that you could remedy that by calling them up a little bit now maybe too soon I mean I and again you got to work with what you got so um, I do think that the 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 Rucker will get louder for that as time goes on until they find their next Bobby Lashley or whatever. And yeah, Bobby Lashley was horribly misused on the main roster. I mean, that was there was there is no reason why he shouldn't still be there and you know contending with Gunther at least. Yeah, and when you look down on who's on the main rosters right now that that are are black, it's it's a very thin group. You've got the Street Profits, you've got the New Day, uh, Apollo Cruz. And Carmelo Anthony, that's it. That's it right now. So there's there's not a lot to to go with when you're uh, trying to, you know, if you're trying to get black wrestlers on male wrestlers on the card. Now, and but at Bad Blood last night, I don't think you can discount that. You know, you had Naomi and and uh, the women's tag team champions uh, Jade Cargo and Bianca Belair showing up. You had the Arkansas Pine Buff Band. Uh, you had rappers. I mean, you know, it's not like they're ignoring black people on this, but it is an interesting quandary, Phil, that they've got to deal with. And, you know, people are starting to take notice. And apparently WWE said, yeah, we're going to start keeping track of this a little bit better now. But, you know, did you have a problem with what Triple H said? No. 
I, I just think, like you said, it, it was sort of bland. And it was, in one respect, I'm glad he was prepared for the question, which also means he's probably thinking about it, which does lead to the fact that there is talent developing in NXT for the future of what they're maybe looking at doing. So I feel like it's in the thought process, at least. I'm hoping. Um, I'm not going to lie. There was a reflection that somebody made to me a while ago about looking at how they were segmenting um, um, some of their stables by by race. Yeah. And it was like, wait a minute, where are we going here with this? Um, That it felt a little too segmented in that respect. And it's not the 80s anymore. And so I'm hopeful that maybe this is a, you know, there will be a turnaround for something different. I'm I'm a little worried. But he didn't really focus on changing things for the future and looking at the future and keeping eye out in the future. And I, I think I understand why from a storyline, this is wrestling perspective, but on the business side, like you can't ignore representation. Yeah. It's, it's a tough spot. And, you know, some guys, a lot of guys got hot and, you know, some people got left behind, but, but I, I think Carmelo is going to get a push here soon. And we're going to see woods breaking away from the new day. So we'll, we'll see how that turns out, but just thought I'd, Throw that one out there. We forgot some other stuff. And by the way, uh, in the chat box, uh, Bayek Scoop hit us a couple of times. Our great friend photographer saying, gentlemen, you are a gentleman and a scholar, Mr. Scoop. And uh, said Brick is good people. He is. So, I, I, he I is. joke. Brick is actually a good dude. He really is. And uh, like I said, we're pro- we're privileged to have him here. In fact, so after he does Wrestling Revolver, he'll be here in Austin. We got Inspire After Death here in Austin on on next Sunday. And he's uh, one half of our tag team champions. Really? Oh, oh. <laughs> Dmitry Alexandrov. He and I, uh, they, they call themselves BDSM. Leave, take, take that for what it's worth. They'll be defending those titles. Phil Stamper is like trying to think of how he's going to challenge for those tag titles, I think. Is that what you're uh, doing, no, Phil? I, I, no, you're welcome. I, are you, hey, it, are I you still have a left knee that is actively uh, transitioning from being somebody else's to mine. And so <laughs> not really <laughs> there yet. It's, right. it's three hours from Grand Prairie to Austin down I-35. Phil, you're welcome to come. There you go, Phil. You got the invite. Good luck. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's uh, get into what happened with AEW. The deal's main deal is done. If you did not see this, and Tony Khan is a very, very happy man. Dave Meltzer reporting $555 million over three years, average of $185 million a year. So it starts lower, middle year will probably be about that. The third year will be up from that. And they have a fourth year option, which apparently jumps that even more. They will also be putting all their content up on HBO Max and the pay-per-views will be moving over there too. They will be sold at a discount and they don't even have this thing done with Fox yet, but apparently that is on the way as well. A massive win for AEW and I think a massive win for pro wrestling. Jason, the deal's done, man. It's over. What do you think? I think it's good. You're going to see a a definite, uh, competition now uh you know a little more than what you've had before with uh, with wwe it, it's definitely going to to help the whole industry you know another avenue for a lot of these wrestlers yeah and and Stu, i'm really excited about the hbo max thing because you know, you're going to get a a much more discounted rate on the pay-per-views which means more people are going to watch you're going to have more people being able to go back and look at the product from beginning to end now rampage depending on how all these other deals work out. Yeah, they might have to take that off there if they end up moving something to Fox, but those components I think are massive in this deal. I believe the word around campfire is that, yeah, rampage will go away. Um, look, it's, yeah. And this is kind of the trend with those things that, you know, you, you know, live, live sports and wrestling is in that. They're going to get big paydays because that's the you know one thing. Live sports gets lots of eyeballs. You can't DVR it, or you can, but people don't usually DVR it. So it makes total sense. The um, yeah, and and yeah, Tony gets paid. He can he can pay for uh, uh, final, final countdown many more times. Um, <laughs> what six or seven? Yeah, at least <laughs> the the thing about the pay per view is going to max. 
Uh, I think that's a good move. I'll be interested to see how much of a discounted price because that you know that's the that's probably the one regret WWE has with Peacock is simple fact they can't charge they don't charge for their pay per views because it's just part of the package. So at least AEW will be able to still recoup some money from that. Uh, and they say that's going to be later in 2025 because Mac they're they're developing the technology to do the live pay per views on Max. Uh, I would suspect it shouldn't be that hard, considering all the different streamers like IWTV and such that do live streaming. So, but yeah, it's yeah, is it you, no matter what, it is a great day for for AEW. Congratulations, Tony Khan and everybody at AEW. Um, and yeah, I think we could see maybe a little more, a little more of a competitive spirit between AEW and WWE. Yeah, especially if they get this show on Fox, the Shockwave show that's rumored to be happening. Now, you get the AEW, whatever form it is, if it's a rap show or you know they actually do some wrestling on there, that is going to be a, a a huge deal. You, you saw what happened with NXT going to CW, just how their ratings jumped up and and the drop that SmackDown took going off of Fox uh, back to USA. So this is this is going to be really interesting for Tony. But, Phil, here's my question for you. You're Tony Khan. What do you do with the new money? Ooh, um, they, need to, they do need to fix some things with production. Um, you know, they're probably going to then increase some, uh, some of the wages they give some of the folks. Um, because there's some people who are doing really, really well. There's some people that could be doing a little bit better. I hope it would not be on any more additional talent to the roster that is three times too big. And when I say this, that's not because I don't want anybody to not have a job. That's not where I want to go. But and I'm in a luxury to be able to be in that position to be able to like you need you need a smaller roster without being able to have any input on on who needs to go. But it, it it's just too much. It's it's too much. You need to slim your product down and refocus it. Which hey, will also help you in some gain of the money that you need because apparently, according to Dave Meltzer, who's crunched the numbers, so already I'm a little like really. Um, They've lost each year for the last two years somewhere between twenty and thirty four million dollars a year. Now they'll be getting somewhere between sixty one and seventy six million dollars a year um, with this deal. So they could get a little bit more with some with some cost savings with with some salary money. But production has always been a challenge. You are right that you know Max needs to test this technology, and even though there are companies that do it, they have to get somebody who specializes in creating that coding for a pay window inside of a existing streaming subscription service. That's sort of like a different level of how their platform will, will need to move function and be able to move forward. Um, it also might then lean into, which is also why it's a little surprising. It isn't there yet. What about more movies at home sooner um, and doing, you know, a good, you know, a pre-release before home streaming release kinds of things that might help recoup some box office money. That's also not being realized in theaters anymore because people are waiting for it to come to streaming. Um, and Max seems like the perfect place to do that. Max is actually making a lot of good moves. So I think this is going to be in the end, a good, a good place. Um, yeah, they just, I think they need to fix some. I really think they have some production stuff they need to fix on because the talent is there. Maybe marketing, you know, I didn't, I'm yeah, not missing the fact. Go. I'm not missing the fact that the WWE and their press releases or press conferences is starting with, these are our attendance numbers and our 60th straight sellout event in a row. Yeah, that yeah, that is definitely not a coincidence. And right. you know, it's funny that you mentioned production too because you know, one thing that I I was so hyped up for this pay-per-view, not necessarily because of the card, but the production stuff that they did leading into this. I mean, Lee Fitting's done an amazing job. And you see these cinematic uh cinematic promos that they've been putting together and just all the neat camera shots, the backstage stuff, you know, that makes it look like more of a, a sports production as opposed to what Kevin Dunn was doing. And and AEW definitely needs to to upgrade that. So that that would be one and production and marketing, I think, would be the two places I'd be spending right now. I, I will say though, to be fair, of all things, WWE last night, I don't think did a great job on some of their camera usage. Like uh, um, oh my god! Uh, 
in the in the women's <laughs> match. Um, you know, the positioning of the camera to see the attack. Um, yeah. From when uh, uh, who is the mysterious man in the hoodie with the bandana on? <laughs> and you're seeing it from the opposite side of the ring through the ropes, and it's like well, you can't even see who you're talking about right now. So, yeah, that they'll they'll get that right though. But it was funny that you you mentioned the amount of money for talent and just real fast because of the Kevin Kelly and Tate twins lawsuit against AEW uh, Chris Harrington. uh, Let's see. Wrote since 2022 AEW has paid more than $60 million in aggregate to uh, for both wrestling and non-wrestling talent on average. That would mean around $207,000 per wrestler over that period from 2022. That's a lot of money. Wow. Any, any yeah, thoughts on pretty that? Good wage. Pretty good wage. I it's, uh, it's going to be in, and that's, that's the other thing that's going to be interesting with the, uh, you mentioned the lawsuit with Kevin Kelly and Tate twins. I, and, and again, I think, you know, all, you know, all of us that have been around wrestling for a long time and covered wrestling, like, you know, I've got, I got to know Kevin. I've had him on my show multiple times. He's a wonderful man. The Tate twins are great young men. Uh, we used to see him all the time in Russell circus here in Austin. They're good dudes, huge, huge Titans fans, but I just don't see, I don't know how that lawsuit is going to go. Um, I got a feeling they're going to run out of money before they can take care of me come because it's, Tony Khan, so yeah. he's he's going he's got money to burn, uh, but yeah, and I think that was you know, and that was one of the original intentions of, uh, you know, when when they started AEW, one of the things was, you know, uh, better pay, better whatever for for the wrestlers. Maybe this will go into that a little bit, and you're right, you know, maybe. They can compete with WWE as far as what they can offer the wrestlers. You know, for their big names, I think they've been doing well. Like when they brought in an edge, I'm sure they made a, a wonderful package of, of financial resources available to him. But it's, you know, the guys who are on the road. And, and this is not a knock because this is, this is an, it's a good opportunity that Tony does give a lot of younger talent to be able to come out to events. WWE does the same thing. And and Tony, they will pay basically the equivalent of the cost of the travel and get them a hotel. Like that's really cool. But a lot of the guys, the complaint of the people who are at sort of this not even the level or tier zero contract arrangement was, well, you know, you bring me back, which is great. I'm coming back time and time again, which is great. Well, I want to not sit here forever. I want to be further advanced up. And everyone says that they like me, but Tony doesn't see that value in me because I'm not this twitter trending guy yes everybody's watching me on ring of honor everybody's watching me from from clips on aaw but i need to leave here to go do more so then it might be more enticing to pay some of those folks a little bit more money to stay around and then maybe think about how you work them up into your system yeah so well tony's got some uh, new cash to play with so good for him and uh by the way before we go to break i just want to mention to everybody that we're going to be starting a new internet show on thursdays Starting around eight fifteen ish, might have pushed eight thirty. We'll see if I can get Ken Thompson from SportsX Radio out of the studio. But we're going to have the Mark Hoke Show late night with a, just a ton of great people joining us from all over the wrestling world. I know that uh, Phil and Stu are going to be involved in this thing, and we're going to be doing wrestling news. But we're going to be doing all sorts of crazy stuff on there too. I'm not letting the cat out of the bag yet. You're just going to have to tune in and find out every week what I'm going to throw at our fine guests that are going to be showing up. But it's going to be a great time, so make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube at The Mark Hoke Show, Facebook The Mark Hoke Show, and X at Mark Hoke Show. And you're going to get to see a really fun and, I think, different take on wrestling and what we're going to be doing on Thursday nights, 8.15 Pacific time. And with that, we will head to break. Phil Stamper, Stu Myrick, Jason Halpern joining me here on The Mark Hoke Show. Having a great time talking pro wrestling. And uh, we had a fifth anniversary show for Dynamite, by the way, and some other stuff happening. So we're going to talk about that when we return. Stick around, everybody. We'll be right back.
Looking for high-quality custom screen printing in Las Vegas? Look no further than Off-Grid Creations. Need a few custom t-shirts for a local event, band merchandise, or family reunion? We've got you covered. Large order of uniforms for your staff, sports team, or club? We can handle that, too. Our experienced team will work closely with you throughout the entire process from design consultation to final product. Call us at 661-300-1115. That's 661-300-1115. Or visit our website at off-gridcreations.com. Get a free consultation today. 101.5 FM KDON. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. Phil Stamper wasn't watching him. I challenged him to a fight. That's okay. You'll see it later I'm, on the live stream. Just sweep the knee. <laughs> hey! Oh, man! Hey. I still have one good leg to kick your butt on. <laughs> no mercy. Mercy is for the weak. Anyway, welcome back to the Mark Hope Show here on KDOM, 101.5 FM, the talk of Las Vegas. I got Jason Halpern, Phil Stamper, Stu Myrick along for the ride with me today. We are having a great time talking pro wrestling. The Dynamite 5th Anniversary Show took place. Of course, that's when the big announcements came out as well about the TV deal. So just a huge old party for AEW this week. A lot of people were talking about the Will Ospreay Ricochet rematch. And this match has absolutely torn the wrestling community apart about what is really a wrestling match. Because, look, we knew from past performances when these guys got together they're going to be flying and it's going to be a lot of gymnastics type stuff and just bouncing all over the place. But some people said, that's not pro wrestling. It's not pro wrestling. You know, you got to be fit more physical. You, you can't be just doing a series of gymnastic type moves. Don't like it. Jason did what Ricochet and Will Ospreay do on Wednesday. Was that a wrestling match? In today's world, yes, I think it is a wrestling match because I think there's a lot more of your of your high flying uh, acrobatics that go into it. Um, it's from the '80s. Would that have been considered a wrestling match? I don't think so, but I think in today's world, I I, I truly think it is a wrestling match. Okay, Phil, you now you're around the guys at Wrestling Revolver all the time. Could appreciate the athleticism. But was it a wrestling match? Oh, absolutely. Um, it. I, I'm trying to remember the comment. What was it that that Lou Thez hated Harley Race because he didn't like his style of selling in the match because it made wrestling look too cartoony. Um, and now you know, look how much wrestling has advanced from there. Um, this to me is just that there's a just there's different styles of wrestling, and this is just a different style of wrestling, and I'm okay with it because they can do it. Um, we, I've seen people who can't and try and can't. And so the fact that they can go that at that level, great. Yeah. It's incredible to, you know, because believe it or not, yes, I know I'm a little, little chunky right now, but I took some gymnastics classes and things like that. I used to play volleyball and a, a ton, and I can really appreciate what those guys are doing while they're in motion and trying to coordinate with somebody else. My God, I just tried not, you know, when I do a vault or something like that, to not kill myself, you know, or get tangled in a, a ring and you know, rip a shoulder out or something like that. So what these guys are doing is just the, the, the athleticism and the coordination is phenomenal. But I know a lot of old school guys, Stu, that look at that and say, ah, no, no. What do you think, yeah. Stu? I, I'm with Phil. Hey, look, if there are different styles. And, yes, old school, I've, I, I have friends that are, you know, old school and they would hate it but it's wrestling it's it so is deathmatch not wrestling is uh is i mean what cage match is that really wrestling it's all wrestling you know um i still consider wrestling a sport but there are those that also consider it an art form there are many different types of art there are many different types of pro wrestling yeah, and it, and it was a great match. I mean, Osprey and Ricochet doing a fantastic job, and uh, you know, looking forward to maybe seeing some more out of those guys. And by the way, I got to mention good old Samantha Irvin, the WWE ring announcer, who of course is currently involved with Ricochet. Gave me some love on Twitter. Thank you, Samantha. 
you have my heart. It's amazing what happens when you call them. Call somebody a national treasure on Twitter. They do appreciate that. <laughs> she is a national treasure. She's fantastic. Man, she sung America the Beautiful to start that thing off last night, by the way. Fan- unbelievable. Now, it should have grabbed Julian Garcia. They could have done a duet. That would have been fun. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, Danielson and Okada hooking it up. That was fun this week. So, you know, a pretty decent show. I think everybody was giving it around a B for the, the entire Dynamite show. But Shelton Benjamin showed up as well. So MVP brings out phase one, Shelton Benjamin. You guys excited, man? You got, are we getting ready for Bobby Lashley? And, you know, apparently that signing is done. Are you ready for this with MVP and the boys, Phil Stamper? Are you ready? I Yes. Yes. Because <laughs> I feel that they'll be used in, a, in differently than what we saw in WWE. And I feel they'll, they'll showcase differently. Differently also means it could go the other way. So I'm I'm ready for it, and I want to see it succeed. Jason, are you excited about this? Hurt Business 2.0. How can you not get excited about it? I Wait. mean, you know, just like you know, to to uh, to follow up on what Phil said. Yeah, they definitely need to uh, to make sure they use it in the right way, unlike uh, the WWE did. Oh, they butchered it. it was, um, I, I, I they were so hot, and I could not understand why they broke those guys up. One of the one of the biggest mistakes Vince McMahon's made in the past had made in the past five or six years, just terrible, terrible. But I'm I'm excited to see him back, Stu. What I, do you What I, do you think, Bobby Lashley and the boys? What, what are you doing with Bobby, man? This is gonna be you fun. Know, I, yeah, that'll be that's gonna be the next reveal, and then uh, Powerhouse Hobbs needs to be a part of that. I think, and he, you know, because he's been he is such a he's such a great young talent, and he has had no direction whatsoever. Let's put him with the Hart Syndicate. Put him with MVP and Bobby and Shelton. I think that would be a fantastic faction. I would too. And, yeah. yeah, I mean it's going to be, and it's just going to provide more, you know, more storyline opportunities, and uh, it'll be another layer to what AEW is doing. Mm-hmm. What do you do with Shelton, guys? Do, do you have Shelton kind of do more tag teamy stuff with maybe somebody else that's in there? Or with no. Bobby, or or do you, or do we finally get to see Shelton Benjamin turned loose? I say let him go. Shelton Benjamin is a fantastic wrestler. Mm-hmm. Let's let's not forget what he did back, you know, back in his New Japan and Noah days, back in uh, Suzuki Goon. Shelton can go. Let him go. I mean, yeah, sure. If you want to put him in a tag team, put him in a tag team. But he can be a sing- he can be a singles wrestler just like the rest of them. Yeah, Phil, what do you think? Because Sheldon really, in WWE, just for the longest time, just never really got a shot individually to show what he can do. And he is absolutely incredible. It, it, didn't, it didn't feel like it. And in that role, it felt like you're, you're here to help them um, get better. And, it, and so it felt like it didn't really showcase him mm-hmm. and the talent he had. And how it could better the company. And that's just it. When you showcase, showcase having good talent, it raises up the other talent because now they want to achieve higher to your level. Plus, then it helps the company because, oh, look at the talent we have. I felt like it was it felt like it was suppressed. Yeah. And Jason, you know, who do you want to see going with these guys? You got any you, like the powerhouse Hobbs idea? Anybody else come to mind? What, what do you, you know? Of course, they're trying to persuade Sir, Sir Strickland to come over to the to the gang. What do you think? Uh you know, uh, the powerhouse Hobbs would be a great addition. Uh, Swerve would be uh, would be an incredible addition. I don't know if that one's going to happen though. Uh, Hobbs, though, I think would be a, would be a, a great one to have come in there. Could you imagine? I, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Sue. No, I was going to say I I'm not sure about Swerve. I think Swerve needs to be his own guy. I wouldn't put him in a. I wouldn't put him in in a in the Hurt Syndicate. I wouldn't put him in any faction right now, really. Let him be a main event talent yeah. on his own. Yeah, I would agree. And, boy, it would be a great opening feud for uh, for uh, Bobby Lashley if you got him in there with Swerve. That would be fun. Uh, by the way, Jesse Hyde in the chat box disagreeing. AEW's Hurt Business won't succeed. Wow, throwing it down. Throwing it down. I think it's going to be great. I would ask why. Yeah. Oh, just Why won't it succeed? Interesting. Or do 
or do you? Well, Jesse's asking the ask or answering that question. Do you have Shelton make a run for Strick, whether it oh. succeeds or not, and then Bobby comes in, and I, that Bobby's the bomb? But then I feel like I just put Shelton in the same boat that he was just in. Yeah, like yeah, don't make him a gatekeeper. Yeah. I, I would say, you know, half sort Strickland. Like, you know, he he declines MVP's invitation, and so that'll be Hurt Syndicate's first target. Is yeah. Sort of. yeah. yeah. You <laughs> know, whether it's Shelton or Bobby or if they decide put uh, Powerhouse. Let me get Prince Nana in there, too. He's been, he's been talking it up. I mean, he was a good wrestler. I mean, people forget that, that he was, he's pretty solid, so. Yeah, you know, I mean, we'll get. Yeah, but again, that's you know, that, again, that would then it's okay. Why? Because you already got MVP as I guess the manager. Why are you going to bring in another manager? Well, I'm just and saying yeah, in terms of maybe not, getting in a few a wrestler, but I don't think anybody will see that. They will see him as oh, you're getting another manager. Yeah, right, well, give me yeah. give me a Shelton taking on Prince Nana to kick things off. I mean, that might be kind of fun. I'm I'm just throwing stuff on the wall here, but yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, maybe um, it's not sticking with you guys, but that's okay. <laughs> not a problem. <laughs> we're, it was like the polite, like, "Oh, bless your heart." Like we're not. <laughs> yeah, I, I got it, Phil. Thank you. <laughs> it's all I, good. An interesting one would be Shelton Benjamin and Lance Archer, former Ooh. Suzuki Gun teammates. Ooh, there you go. That's not bad. Yeah, Lance Archer needs a push too. I don't know. Well. I, I, he might be getting one with Don Callis. We'll see. You know, they haven't used him a lot. And Lance is too good to not be used. Yeah, I would agree with that. No doubt about it. All right, let's go. Guys, we got to get one more break in here. And uh, just to remind everybody, if you would like to make sure to build your brand, whatever you need, embroidered shirts, uh, T-shirts, pens, stickers, signs, banners, whatever you need, I want you to do me a favor and give Mike a call at Off Grid Creations. Uh, you can check it out at off-gridcreations.com. They, Mike does an unbelievable job. I mean, I got the nice shirt you know, that he made for me and you know the banners you may have saw, seen at WrestleConnects. He, he is unreal. So do me a favor and check it out at offgridcreations.com. Uh, excuse me, off dash grid creations.com and of course uh, he'll do a free brand co- brand consultation for you just give him a buzz at 661-300-1115 that's 661-300-1115 he'll work with you nationally wherever you are not just in vegas and i promise you he's going to take great care of us so check it out off dash grid creations.com all right and if i grab the correct mouse and start the music we will head to break one more time around with Jason Halper and Stu Myrick and Phil Stamper. Oh, man, a great show and a terrific discussion here on everything happening in the world of pro wrestling. Stick around, everybody. We got a whole lot more, including Hammerstone laying it down outside the ring. How about that? Pretty cool stuff. Stick around. We'll be right back. One oh one five FM K Don. You're listening to the number one professional wrestling radio show in Vegas, The Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Now, here again is Mark Hoke. All right, let's do this one more time. The best in pro wrestling news and entertainment on KDOM 101.5 FM, the talk of Las Vegas. Phil Stamper, Stu Myrick, Jason Halpern, and yours truly, Mark Hoke. Thanks for being with us. We do appreciate it. Now, normally, I don't talk about some regular old tag match on AEW Collision. You know, it's just, okay, whatever. You know, it's just another match. But this one, I'm a little surprised about, and I think it's time we start talking about these boys. The dreaded outrunners, guys. Phil's laughing already. (laughs) Yep. But they beat the grizzled young veterans. It's the other team that they just brought in here. They are apparently the third highest selling merchandise for AEW. And if you don't know who the Outrunners are, they are your stereotypical 80s tag team. Complete with 80s style vignettes, the whole ball of wax. I mean, these guys are 
crazy. But somehow it's working. And now they take a win away from the grizzled young veterans who just came into AEW to much fanfare. And the outrunners get the push. Phil, since you start laughing right away, are we going to be seeing the outrunners as the AEW World Tag Team Champions soon? We could. They're just fun. They're just fun. They do it right. They know they know what their job is, and they're doing it, and they're doing it well. And what you just said, they're the, the third top uh, gimmick or uh, gear sellers. I don't know what shirt. I don't know. Merchandise seller. Thank you. Couldn't find the word. Uh, top three merchandise seller in, in AEW, which means, hey, look, there's a level of success here. Somebody likes them. Maybe we need to give them that push, which means, hey, that may, will make more money now. So, hey, I think it's a win-win for everybody. The Jason at the expense of the grizzled young veterans right off the bat. That's That's got to sting those two a little bit. <laughs> uh, I'm sure it does sting them a little bit. But, uh, you know, like Phil said, you, you know, somebody likes these guys somewhere. So you got to push them. You know, it, it's it's the merchandise. It's the marketing. That's what's going to push them. It's going to put more money in their pockets uh, for the company. And Stu, you and I are of a certain age that we remember how goofy and crazy the 80s promos were and how they looked. And this is clearly reaching out to partially our audience and an audience of, man, we just like a, like ourselves a wacky tag team. What do you think of these guys? Because they, they like me on Twitter, by the way. We're friends. There, there is, so our dear friend Simon Miller from what culture wrestling he has a saying goofy wrestling for life and i am a firm and stout subscriber to that and uh, it's like it's like phil and jason said you go with the hot hand they are hot it's kind of that whole what's old is new again and you get you know you get these nostalgia it kind of goes in cycles right and i think right now Maybe people are trying to feel a little bit of the 80s. And the Outrunners have captured it beautifully. Yes. So why not? Let's, hey, they're hot. Let's push them. See how far they can go. Go ahead. And what, I, I will say, like what you said about gr- Grizzled Young Vets, though, I feel bad. I really like, I really like these guys. I, I thought they were going to come in. And like just level, you know, level out all the competition. And in their match against the acclaimed, it was not their fault. The acclaimed had botches and it made them look bad. And like, so I, I don't think they've ever recovered their footing since then, just to be very honest. And I, I want them to succeed, like, because they're a great, great tag team. But like, I think I thought this was a space to then reintroduce them. And oh, well, I guess we're going to do this again. Yeah, it it's tough for those guys. I mean, I wonder though if I wonder though if maybe you could be kind of starting a a secondary feud and but God I just I'm just trying to picture the the outrunners beating the young bucks. I'm trying to picture that in my head and I just I just can't see it. I can't. But you know uh, who knows? I mean, Stu. I mean, you're. you're I I see you wringing your head over there. It's like private party beat them in that first. You know. When they ran the tournament to crown new tag champions, private party beat them. Why not? Yeah. Well, it's, well, it, it, that's the first round of a tournament, though, so it's a, it's a little different circumstance. It's still than, a match. It's huh? still a match. So why not put the outrunners against the Bucks? But win? That's the question. But win? I, you know, it, I th- I it would make the crowd happy. That is true. Let's. let's I mean. Look, and I like I like Matt and Nick. I really do. This the 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 whole you know doing the v, the the uh, EVP thing and all this. It's like all right, guys. You know, you're not. It's it's cute, but now it's kind of it's kind of like all right. And I think people are waiting for whoever takes the tag titles off them, even if it's a transitional thing. Why not? Let the outrunners get a win. They get the titles, and then, you know, some heel team will take them off of them in a week or two. Well, fair enough. Wrestle Dream, by the way, coming up on Saturday, and we don't have time to preview the whole card, 
But, uh, Phil, what are you looking forward to on uh, Wrestle Dream coming up with the main event? Danielson and Mox. I mean, that's. I just want that to be violent. I want that to be aggressive. I want that to be hard hitting, and I hope it is. Um, there are times, and I, 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 we have Moxley at Revolver. There are times that I'm like, man, I want you to ratchet, ratchet it up a notch. I would probably be punched in the face if I was ever told that. I want him to be aggressive, super aggressive, super in your face. I like this Moxley, and I want to see more of it. Jason, uh, Wrestle Dream coming up. Any any thoughts on the card coming up on Saturday? Uh, you know, I'm kind of with Phil on this one. Love to see uh, Moxley ratchet it up. Um, you know, that being said, you know, also looking forward to the uh, the uh, Osprey Ricochet. Uh, you know that that uh, and Takeshita and Kata- yeah, exactly. I'm I'm looking forward to that one as well. Um, those are probably the highlights I'm looking at. And Stu, real quick, what do you think about Wrestle Dream coming up? I want to say, you know, I think we all figure Mox is probably going to win. This will, this is it for Brian. I want to see if they will reveal about this whole, this is bigger than us. And I pray to God it's not Shane McMahon. And Jesse Hyde in the chat box <laughs> said Shane McMahon come to AEW. I hope not. Raise yourself. You know, and I, and I should have gone this year, and I just, with it being on Saturday, it's a little bit tough my schedule. I went last year and just had a great time. And I have a feeling something really special is going to happen here at Wrestle Dream on Saturday. So make sure you guys check that out. And that's it. It's not Shane. It's Vince. <laughs> Phil Stamper. Phil, I, I, I really like you. <laughs> now I don't even want to oh. see you inside my state. Oh, that's fair. oh no. I'm not you wanting it. I'm not wanting it. Oh, dear God. I hope I didn't manifest it. <laughs> Better Jesus. not have. Jason Halpern, you can follow him on, on X at LV underscore hit MN. Stu Myrick, you can check out his amazing podcast, Sports Guys Talking Wrestling. He is at Stu Myrick, S-T-E-W-M-Y-R-I-C-K. Phil Stamper at Trust and Phil. If you want to block him, go right ahead right now. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thanks so much for a terrific show. I want to thank all three of you for joining me. Thursday night, we're going to see you. So make sure you hop online and check us out and follow us on Twitter at Mark Oak Show, Facebook and YouTube, The Mark Oak Show. We'll see you next week, Las Vegas. Thanks for joining us. Want more of The Mark Oak Show? Follow us on Twitter at Mark Oak Show. Like us on Facebook at The Mark Oak Show. And visit MarkHokeShow.com to keep up with everything happening with the show. And remember to check out all of our archive shows on YouTube at The Mark Hoke Show and download our podcasts at markhokeshow.podbean.com and all your favorite podcast outlets. So join the Mark Hoke Show family today, and thanks for listening.